Okay, so the key to the first couple problems here is you want to look at the y values. Um, first, make sure x is always increasing by the same amount, and in all of these tables it is. It's always going up by one. Okay, so if x is increasing by a consistent amount, then what you want to look at are the y terms. Are the y terms are you adding or subtracting a number each time, or are you multiplying or dividing a number each time? So that's that's the main difference. In number one, you can see uh, the gaps between the, the y values are not the same every time. That's I think that's probably the easiest way to tell. Like, look at the gaps between the numbers. All right, Megan. Wait, do I have a Megan in that class? Megan, are you in my class? <laughs> Hello? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, that was my, so my sister was using my iPad earlier for my Zoom meetings for her own Zoom meetings because she doesn't have an iPad. So okay. that's why it says Megan there. <laughs> but who is it? Oh, it's my sister. Um, it's Ava. Ava, thank you. Okay, that I was very confused. Okay, so we got Ava and Cheyenne now. All right. Um, yes. So uh, Cheyenne was just asking about numbers. Well, really, numbers two, three, and four. Just how to figure out like whether just by looking at a couple points whether it's linear or exponential um and then and then ava if you have any questions um we can tackle those after this all right so so basically you want to look at the gaps between the numbers in the y values um, as long as the x values are all consistently increasing all right so in this one it's exponential because we are Basically, I wrote dividing by two every time, but really we're multiplying by one half. Like that's the that's the number that we're multiplying uh, the previous number by to get the next number. So you see how like eight and four have a difference of four, and then four and two have a difference of two, and then two and one have a difference of one. The difference is changing every time, the difference between the y numbers. In two and three, the gap always stays the same. Three plus four is seven, seven plus four is 11. 11 plus 4 is 15. So if we were to draw it, if we were to, so if we were to draw it like this, you would just be adding 4. Adding 4. Adding 4. Okay, so see the difference? With exponential functions, you either multiply or divide the y term by some by the same number to get the next number every time. And with linear functions, you either add or subtract the same number to get the next number every time. Does that help? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this one would be linear. Okay, this one, let's see, we're, we're subtracting three, and then subtracting three, and then subtracting three. The gap between the y values is the same every time, so this would also be linear. Okay, so let's go back to number four now. What about number four? Is the gap between those numbers always the same? No. No. Okay. So that tells us that it's exponential. And if we now, obviously, uh, to get from here to here to here, we don't really know what you multiply 0 0.125 by to get 0.5, but we do know what you multiply 2 by to get 8. And what is that? 4. Yeah, right? So we're going to say times 4 to get here. So the rest of them must be the same. A quick check on the calculator and you can verify that, yes, we're multiplying by 4 every time. All right, so basically um, it would be some 4 to the x power would be the exponential function. So uh, that's the main way to tell the difference. It's basically are you adding or subtracting a number to get the next y value every time or are you multiplying or dividing by a number? Okay. Okay, make a little bit more sense? Yes. All right. And what was your other question, China? Uh, number nine. 
Number nine. Of just how to graph this? Yes. Okay. Well, remember I said in my video that you want to pick, you want to start with X values that increase consistently and that are also really easy to work with. Like if you, you don't want to use X equals 0.35 because then you have to put that into the function and make sure it's right and it's really hard to graph. Okay. So I suggest that we always use these numbers. All right. They're very easy to work with when we raise, especially zero and one, when we raise a number to a power, um, you know, the zero and one are really easy numbers to work with when they're exponents. And that's what we're going to be doing here. So I'm going to have to grab my calculator. Okay. All right. So basically we're going to take these four values that we pick for X and remember you can pick, I mean, you can pick literally any number that you want to for X, but we want to pick numbers that are easy to work with. So that's the only reason I'm suggesting that we pick zero, one, two, and three. Plus it'll be, it'll be easier to graph. Okay. So we're going to take our calculator and this is what we're going to put in to evaluate it. Remember, we just, we take that X value, we put it in where X is in the function. So the first value we're going to do one fourth to the zero power. And then once we get that answer, we're going to multiply it by two and we'll have our Y value. All right, so we're just evaluating the function four different times with four different numbers. All right, so I'm going to type in. So what is one fourth to the zero power? Why? No, it's not. Two. Anything to the zero power. We learned this last week. Well, we covered it last week. Ava, you know, anything to the zero power is? Uh, two. Nope. Uh, well, it's not just all two, but um, is the it answer. always like this? Yeah. The answer is two. Uh, the y value is two because one fourth to the zero power is one, right? Anything to the zero power is one. And then we have to multiply it by this two right here. So we, we raise it to the power, we get a one here, and then when we multiply one times two, we get two. All right, let's do it for one. Two times one fourth to the first power. All right, and you can literally type it in two parentheses, one divided by four, close parentheses, and then raise that to the one power, and we get 0.5. So try and show you my calculator here. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so we get 0 0.5. All right. Let's do it again. X is going to be 2 this time. All right. So technically, and we can do it by hand too. Uh, we just square the top and we square the bottom. So 1 squared is 1, 4 squared is 16. Uh, and then we have to do 2 times 1, 16. So 2 times 1 divided by and that's 0 0.125. All right. And then finally, we do it for three. Okay, so I'll do it down here. Two times one fourth to the third power. And that would equal two times one over four to the third, which is six four. So, two parentheses, one divided by 54, zero, point zero three one two five. So I'm gonna round that off. We'll just say zero point zero three. Remember, we're not we're, if we're graphing this, it's not gonna be perfect anyway. So, let me move this. All right, let's get out of the way of my graph. Okay. So now we have our table. Now we all we have to do is create some axes that make sense uh, yeah. and graph those, those ordered pairs. We got four ordered pairs that we're going to plot. So, um, all right. So I'm going to bring my, I'm going to bring my axis in a little bit like this. And again, you don't have to do it this way. I just kind of like doing this. Go. So there's, here's my X axis. Here's my Y axis. Here's zero on, that's my origin. All right, so 
On the x-axis, I only have to fit in the number zero through three. So I can actually skip a line every time just to spread it out a little bit. All right, and we can even throw the four in there. We're not gonna use that point, but that's okay. Uh, and then since on the y-axis, the biggest value we have to fit on there is two, we can actually break this up a little bit more and we can maybe go by how many lines we got. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we have nine lines to work with. That means if I go four lines and make, and make that a one, then I can go four more lines and make that a two, and all of our numbers are gonna fit on that coordinate plane. Does that make sense? This is probably the most challenging part of the problem, I think, is figuring out what scales you should use for your axes. But are you both with me so far? Yes. All right, yeah. cool. All right, so let's plot these points. We got zero, two. So that's gonna be right here on the y-axis. Uh, we got one and 0.5, so that comes way down here, one and, and one half. Two and then 0.12. So two and then, so that first line up is 0.25. So it's gonna be about halfway. It is gonna be exactly halfway between zero and 0.25 like that. And then three and 0 0.03, that's gonna be so close to the x-axis. That's gonna, it's barely getting off the x-axis, but it's not zero. So we don't wanna put that line exactly on the x-axis. All right, and then we can draw, our, so you can kind of see the curve forming now. Let's get my laser pointer out just to show you. All right, so our line is gonna come down like this and that's gonna be the curve. And then it's gonna get really, really close to the x-axis, but it's never quite gonna touch it. So let's draw our graph in here. Just try and make the best smooth curve that you can. And like I said, don't quite, you don't quite want to hit that axis. You want to keep it just a little bit above if you can. But I'm I'm splitting hairs here. That that's not really the important part. The important part is that you can evaluate these functions and plot the plot the ordered pairs. Okay, questions about that one? No. No. Cool. Okay. Um, have you have either of you tried the Kahoot challenge yet? No. Yeah, I have. Ava, you did. Yeah. How'd it go? I couldn't hear you. How did it go? Um, uh, I think I got in like fourth place. Okay. All right. That's not bad. Um. So you can see all the other student scores after you finished? Yeah. Oh, that's pretty cool. I mean, look, first time using something like that. So, all right, uh, Ava, did you have any questions you want to go over? Uh, not really, I kind of got everything. Awesome. That's great news. Uh, and, uh, and Cheyenne, if there's something else you want to go over, uh, I'd be happy to, but by all means, don't feel, don't feel uh, required to stay for the entire hour, all right? So, yeah, you guys didn't have any problems with five through seven? No. That's just, that's just plugging in. It's like, it's basically what you do in eight and nine, but you're only doing it once instead of four times. So, awesome. Well, yeah, this was just really an introduction to exponential functions. In the next two weeks, like next week, we're going to talk about uh, exponential growth, where the, like, um, this is an example of exponential growth where it gets further and further away from the x-axis uh, as it as x gets bigger okay because our basically our number right here is greater than one and then the week after that we're going to take a look at decay functions this is a decay function because the function keeps getting smaller and smaller as x gets bigger so it gets, keeps getting closer and closer to the x-axis uh, and that's because our growth factor, our B value here, is less than one. So less than one, it's going to be a decay. Greater than one, I know there's a negative one out front, but this is the base of the power is two here. So if it's greater than one, then it'll be a growth function. And it, the only reason it grows away from the x-axis going down is because of that negative sign in front. If this had just been two to the x, then the graph would kind of like, it would start here and it would go up like that. It would curve. All right. 
Sound good? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Cool. You guys do anything else cool this week? Um, no. I only have one last thing to do for schoolwork this week, and then I'm going to be done for the whole entire week. So, not really. That's a, that's, well, that's a good feeling, though. Mm -hmm. Get it done today so you can take tomorrow off. Yeah, it's been pretty boring around here, too. Mm -hmm. I guess that's what everybody's going through right now. Are you ready to kill your siblings yet? <laughs> uh, Cheyenne? Well, I've had a little bit of argument with my siblings, but it's just all chill. So. Oh, good. Cheyenne, do you have any siblings? No. Ah, so you're all alone. Cool. Well, I hope you're not going too crazy.